The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Noon from TFNN. Welcome to the May 15th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? Yep, yeah, let's have an extraordinary day. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but most importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in right now at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Just send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, all indices, well, I take that back. All indices, with the exception of the transports, are in the green. The Dow is up a half a percent. The S&P up six tenths. The NDX 100 up one and two tenths. Russell 2000 basically flat, up a buck thirty. Uh, the transports are down 250, so we're going to call that a flat market out here. Uh, you've got gold uh, trading up two bucks, 1298.30. Silver's flat, and light sweet crude is up. Quarter. To the upside, leading the charts, it's Google, $40, trade down at $11.65. The trade desk up nine, Am Docs Limited up six, Mon God B, something like that. That's up uh, about six bucks. To the downside, it's Trandigem Group, $17.3.5%. Children's Place down seven and a half. Um, Agilent Technologies up nine. Signature Bank down six. So certainly things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Uh, only one request, and before I go to that's an individual stock, let's just take a look and answer the question, hey, why did the market bottom and when it did this morning? Sound like a good idea out there? Okay. All we have to do is come over to, oh, sorry about that, is come over to our short-term time frame chart. You and I you know, look at these. Uh, this is going to be a clean version of it. Uh, not that the other ones aren't clean, but they just have more tools and indicators on them. We don't need more tools and indicators. If we take a look at, now, why did the Dow Equity Futures contract at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon, we got off the air, why did it top? Well, there were two reasons. See this green horizontal line out there? That is a resistance line. It's established by that TD setup nine count. You will see that price was hitting right at resistance, bar number eight. What's bar number eight tell us? Get that the hair on the back of your neck to start standing up. Well, no matter what time frame it is you are looking at, you see that the hair should be standing up. Now, it should stand up uh, more so if you're coming into resistance. You did get bar number nine at 2.30. The market went ahead and pulled back. Pulled back to where, by the way? The red line is support. The green line is resistance. Now, this morning, just get to, get to the point, steve On a 30-minute basis, exactly at 10 o'clock, you got to where? Bar number nine. And what's transpired so far? Well, price was able to move right through that once you get that bar number nine, it sets up your next resistance level. That was at the price point out here of the exact number was 25,567. Price sliced through that at 1130 this morning. As price was moving into that area, there was no other than it being resistance, and it is resistance. It was resistance. Uh, that resistance failed, but no, um, no, what we'll call topping signal at that stage.
decades. Still no topping signal. Still none. But yet price has found resistance. This level, we got to take this all the way back here. This is the, that was a breakdown level that takes you back to May 13th, and that's at 7.30 in the morning. That's where price is struggling. If price can close above that, I didn't give you the price, did I? I should give it to you, 25672 That's the number to be watching. But we'll see over the course of the next, this could be bar number seven. I don't know if it will be or won't. Uh, then you'd have bar number eight at uh, that could complete at two o'clock today. Uh, geez, it did that yesterday too. Anyways, we can't do the bar counting until we actually get to bar number nine, but uh, there's some possibility here. Now, that's what happened inside of the uh, Dow out there. In the case of the NQ, it did not form a nine count this morning. Instead, what Price was doing right there at the same time that the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract, just a 30-minute basis chart that we're looking at, 30-minute time frame chart, right here, this was actually 9.30 this morning. So I did the NQ bottom at 9.30. Well, Price just came down, tested support. You can see you had Doble Ghee support out here. Take a look where Price in essence has stopped. Why did price stop in its tracks out there? Because this is where the breakdown area was. It's not where the gap is. Most people would think that that's where it was. Not that the gap is not important, but that is not where the breakdown began. The breakdown began right here. This is at um, 1.30 in the morning. Yeah, 1.30 in the morning. That's right, on May the 13th. That price level is 75.2450. That will be a key level to be watching today. Look, we could go through the ES and the Russell 2000. I'll just leave those for you to go through. If you're an intraday trader and you're not using this tool, this set of tools, you've got to ask yourself the following question. Why? Well, if it's because you're not sure how to use that tool, then just go subscribe to Mastering Probability. There's a one-hour workshop that's uh, in the archive section for subscribers to the uh, newsletter. And just simply learn it. Learn it. Use it. Use it for whatever time frame it is that you are using out there. Any wonder that on a quarterly basis that Apple topped where it did as it formed that TD setup nine count? The answer, my friend, is no. Not really a surprise, just simply by taking a look at it. Okay, so we've got that. Let's go uh, start to jump over to the question that came in, because if you write in, I want to answer that question. The first one coming from Keith M. Keith M. writes in, hey, Steve, I'm long RIO. Um, that is, uh, let's go take a look at that uh, ticker symbol out here. That is Rio Tinto. That's versus R-E-O. That's why I had to pause there because, my, you know, you say R-I-O, I'm thinking R-E-O. Obviously, that, you know, that wasn't it. But getting impatient, long and impatient, uh, especially after Target uh, raised yesterday. Also, your thoughts on SPX going into Friday. So, okay, so look, I don't know when you say um, after Target raised. I don't know who raised the Target. But let's just take a look at Rio Tinto. Here's what we know before we go to the break, and then we'll come back. We'll finish this off. Uh, on a daily perspective, you don't like what you see. What do you see? You see price running into resistance of the bottom of that profile. 58.97 is a number. Price must close above. The daily chart is saying eh, there could be more downside movement. Movement to where? 55.57. That's the bottom of that weekly profile. You're in between a brand new monthly profile right now. Support could be 57.68. I'd watch that 57.68 like a hawk. Otherwise, it's 55.57. Next up, we'll go further. Take a look at RIO our our on my little chart. Right the Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at Rio Tinto for uh, Keith out here. So, Keith, here's the deal right now. And I know you're impatient. You're long. I don't know where you're long from. But when we take a look at Rio Tinto, we know that it was below the daily profile. We also know that, for example, yesterday and last week, uh, when Rio Tinto moved higher, where it ran into resistance was Stevie's green line out here. That green line right now is priced at about 58.67. Uh, you're trading at uh, 58.27 as we speak. So if uh, you want to be less patient, you want to see price close over Stevie's green line. In lieu of that, you do have support. We just took a look at the TD setup and nine count. We looked at the resistance and the support lines. It works this way for all instruments. For the daily profile here, that says that your real level of support that you would want to be watching, uh, that formed on the low of March 26 out there. That's where the real breakout inside Rio Tinto began. And that breakout level is at 56.64. So I would say as long as price remains above 56.64, if that was the number I just gave you, I think that it was, then you're probably okay. Now, there's another level just below that. And so that would be your final level of support out here. That's from 215, February 15th. That low is 55.88. Do I see a pattern here that says that Rio Tinto is about to uh, move higher? The answer is I do not. You do not either. It's below Stevie's green line. It's below uh, the bottom of the uh, daily profile out there. But that doesn't mean that support won't uh, get broken or will get broken. Just means it's support to the downside. Those are the levels. Those two red lines are the areas that you want to watch. Uh, short of that, then you're looking at those targets that we took a look at earlier. That was the weekly. That might actually get you down towards that level, which is 55, 57 and uh, 53.95 on the monthly time frame chart with this new profile by the way that formed for you back on may 6 tells you that the trend changed to the uh, downside out there so keith thanks for writing in oh you asked the question what are my thoughts going into friday in the s p 500 um we're in a trader's market 
Now, I'm just going to make it really simple. We're in a trader's market. Uh, to me, that means what you need to be doing is uh, looking at the uh, short-term time frame charts out here. So specifically, we had looked at the NQ and the YM. If you're wondering why did price stop where it did this morning, it's a little bit harder to read. That's why I took out those other charts earlier. Uh, it was with the uh, eight count of that TD setup, a nine count pattern. And now well, it's actually, it's easier here. Price is in the resistance. So we took a look at resistance inside the other equity futures contract. You want to see how resistance works here. Take a look at those two green lines, 2858. 50 is the next level. Now, what I don't have, we just know the price at resistance out here. I don't really have anything that is bearish, so to speak. But, hey, it's at resistance. We could begin to see some type of retracement out here. Uh, if you can get a close on a 30-minute basis, that's all you would need above 28.58.50, then I say uh, the S&P 500 can move higher out here. Now, we do have a higher low that occurred this morning. We do have a slightly higher high versus yesterday. So those are all little short-term positives, so to speak. But we're really in a uh, in a trader's market. We saw that yesterday. Uh, we see that this morning. So I would be paying attention to these patterns. If you're trying to trade them, you're asking about Friday. So that means you're really, to me, not a long-term trader out there. Um, I'd watch 28.58 like a hawk because that's also the bottom of the weekly profile out there. And then um, Mr. Z says the account to the downside or is this to the upside? It's another peak G. Let me see here. I don't have a peak G. Mr. Z, I only have level A. And then to the downside, it was F that I had out there. But <clears throat> maybe we're using two different sets of uh, swing points out there. Um, sorry about uh, that. Um, or maybe you were talking about something from yesterday. But yesterday was we had that nine count. Remember you were on the air and you were saying, what price would you go long and or good short? And we had that 28.58. But I said, you cannot discount. I think I said that the mere fact that we're right at resistance. And at 2 o'clock, we were making that eighth bar out there, that top. And that's what actually sent things lower. I posted in the den to watch this red line overnight. Uh, which, in fact, uh, that is where price hit earlier this morning. That was about 8 o'clock this morning. Failed and went on and produced that nine-count bottom inside the ES on the 30-minute basis. Now, these patterns will eventually start failing, perhaps, on the 30-minute basis and start working better on a different time frame. But right now, they're working for all of the equity futures contracts uh, about as about as good as you can get out there. So, Keith, I would say pay attention to the 30-minute time frame for the ES if you are trying to navigate uh, what it's going to do or likely to do come this Friday. No other questions that I see out here. So, come on, folks, help me out. Help me, Rhonda, right? Uh, and the reason is, is because uh, when you do help me out, then that way, at first, it makes it easier. The show goes by quicker. And then I'm giving you specific information that you want. All right. So I don't have that. What are we really paying attention to? What are we focused on? What am I focused on? You know, I'm focused on Goldilocks. Why am I focused on Goldilocks right now? Well, the two-hour time frame is going to complete the current candle session out here. And the current candle, current candle session says, well, potentially be careful. Now, why is it saying be careful? Well, because we actually had price, price moving higher, doing less relative energy at 9 a.m. this morning. And the current bar that we're in, it is a bearish reversal candle. It is what's referred to as a dark cloud cover. Now, it's not the strongest of the bearish reversal candles, uh, but it's not the weakest either. And it is a reversal candle. And prices below Stevie's green line. Now, the push lower this morning was a test of support at 1295.50. That is going to be a key area. If you see price close below that, the signal from the five-hour time frame chart is that the trend has changed. You can see the high that was formed yesterday. There was no profile. There was not a profile at, at that shooting star, but still, that's even a bearish reversal signal. Um, we could draw an A to B equals CD pattern in here and probably get pretty close to it. But that's neither here nor there. The more important pattern is one that is taking place or took place or began taking place at 9 o'clock this morning. So be careful. What are you watching for? 1295.50. It closed below that. That, on a two-hour time frame, that would be to 2 p.m. That would be um, as the uh, at 5 p.m. That would be at 11. 
uh, p.m. That would be 4 in the morning. But we have new profiles and so forth that form there. The dark cloud cover and this pattern is nothing more right now because there's no level of support that has been broken. That's the bottom of the box you and I are taking a look at is the kind of pattern that says take your umbrella because it could start pouring. Uh, could start pouring. Support has to be broken. That's at the 1295.50 level. Watching that really like a hawk. What's the one-hour time frame chart here telling us about uh, Goldilocks? Well, we had that topping pattern here back uh, yesterday. So you could see there it is on the shorter-term time frame, giving you that Rhodes Momentum indicator top. Is it worth paying attention to? Was it also a dark cloud cover candle? Uh, when did things start romping and rolling to the downside? Well, as soon as price broke through support, the bottom of of the 60-minute profile, that was at the time period of 2,300 hours, and then price proceeded to move a lower out there. So really importante to be watching Goldilocks. Yeah, it's up a buck 40. So what? The question is, is it going to pull back, and is it going to break support at 1,295.50, and then break the backs of the bulls? Possible. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, Alex writes in and says, uh, hi, Steve, seasonal question. Mass seasonal answer then. 
Um, and what kind of seasoning do you like, Alex? Uh, what would be my favorite seasoning? It really depends. You know, the problem with garlic, who doesn't like garlic? The uh, problem with garlic is, you know, you end up tasting it all night, and then, you know, if you're, you know, if you're kissing somebody and they didn't have garlic, it could be kind of nasty, you know what I mean? And if you're, uh, but uh, uh, I don't, seasonal, so what kind of season? What would be a good season out there? Ginger. Ginger's a, ginger's a great, I, I eat ginger every day. I have a shot of ginger every morning. Uh, talk about uh, Talk about waking you up. Try that one. All right, but let's get to the seasonal question out here. And Alex writes in, is there going to be a summer rally to new highs? As if I have a crystal ball out there. Now, what uh, Alex is asking you, folks, he's asking this. Because, you see, what Alex knows, you know, many of us know that there is a seasonal cycle uh, to the markets out here. And what I do is I kind of use these dates as uh, guidelines. Look for patterns to occur around these dates to assist us with understanding what the market is doing. And what Alex knows is that from a seasonal perspective, that uh, price typically moves lower into the end of June and then makes a little summertime rally that lasts for about four weeks. It's pretty much a four-week deal. Just like the high that occurs in May to June is about a four- to five-week move. And then we get something that's longer. We typically get the move from July-ish uh, down into October. And so then you're looking at a two-and-a-half-month uh, type cycle, something along uh, those lines. So are we going to get that? The answer, Alex, is... Um, First, I need to see what happens as the market moves lower into the end of June. And so I would ask everybody out there right now in listening land, and everybody raise your hand, those folks that think that the market is going to move lower between now and the end of June, raise your right hand. Everybody, come on, raise your I can't, I can see, okay, and I, I see a lot of people not doing any. Ruby, Ruby says yes. And those folks that believe that that's not going to happen, and instead, eh, forget Steve O's cycles out there. Not that it's my cycle. I just went ahead and translated the uh, work out there. Think that the market is not going to move lower and is going to move higher from here, that we made a bottom. How many people believe that? Raise your hand. Now, I don't know what the exact answer is. I can, I can show you both could be correct out here. Peter says no. Peter's got, he's, he, Peter's on Ruby's side. I got that. And, um, but here, here could be a reason why you could see the markets. Have they made a significant bottom out here? Isn't that really the question? And here's the answer. We don't know. It's very possible. Now, why? I, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to play the middle of the road here, out here. Uh, what I'm just simply trying to say is that uh, I can't ignore the nine count pattern. Are you? Now you can't ignore it either out there. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract, the only one at this stage here to complete the A to B equals CD or Gartley buy pattern. And Alex and Jose and Ruby and Peter and Z. And everybody, if we're just simply going to cherry pick when we're going to accept Gartley buy patterns and not, then we're probably going to get into a lot of trouble by doing that. Now, not every Gartley buy pattern or any pattern that we take a look at always works. But here you had a one to over two, A to B equals CD to the downside. You get to uh, set up bar number nine. Is there really, is it a, it's not mystery meat or anything. Is, there, is it really a mystery that, in fact, we saw the bounce that we did yesterday? No, it is not. Now. Here's one of the likely outcomes with regard to this. Now, I'm not showing you. I'm showing you the A to B equals CD uh, to the downside. If we, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to do this. All you have to do is go back. You already know this in your mind and take a look at the move off of December 24th. Here's our first A to B equals CD to the downside. It's a Gartley pattern because it was just a small retracement from the low in December out there. And price also ran into a level of support, that blue line. That was the hammer candle out there. That was previously where there was a bottom as well as a TD set up nine count out there. I'm going to go ahead. Well, I was going to try to get rid of it. Uh, maybe it won't let me get rid of it. Let me try. There we go. It's deleted. <clears throat> what else is it, Peter, that you see here? Because Peter, I, Ruby, you answer, what is it you see on this chart? What is it? You already wrote that in there, O-U-L. What did you mean, Ruby? What did you mean? What did you mean about the oscillator unchanged line right now? 
What is it that you see on this chart that makes you think something, that that's something for us to pay attention to? Now, I know Ruby's typing and or is sending me a message, and I know the reason why she said that. And she is dead on balls accurate. A line stolen from my cousin Vinny, but one of my favorite lines out there, maybe yours too. And she's right. And what is it? So on top of, on top of the fact that the Dow Equity Futures contract made this bottoming, two bottoming patterns out here, the green line turned red. And what Ruby knows about that is that that tells us that the price oscillator, the difference between two exponential moving averages, 19 to 39, was at zero. And when it's at zero, what does it tell us? It tells us that what we're about to experience over the next many days, how many days, I don't know, is we should see that line and price catch up to each other. And it won't be Alex, Peter, Ruby, Jose, Z, Stevo. It's not until we see the test there whether we know whether this Dow pattern was a significant bottoming pattern. Because the counter trend rally should continue to occur until that test takes place. And if that test takes place, and if we see price deflect down below that red line, then, Alex, the likelihood of price moving lower into the end of June, you, everybody should be raising their hands at that stage. And if price is able to close above that, well, this could be a significant bottom. Price could get up to Stevie's not my green line. This is actually the TD setup green line out there, which happens to be the high from the trading session of uh, May Day out there, May 1st, when we take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract out here. So we have to take things one uh, bar at a time, one day at a time out there. I do believe, and there was something that I shared with subscribers this morning, that what's going to happen is if that test does occur, my crystal ball says that would be where the counter trend rally ends and price moves lower from there. But we're going to simply have to wait it out and see what occurs out there. So, Alex, you're asking about the move into July. I need to wait to see what the patterns are going into the end of June out there. And, uh, and then I can better answer that question. So I hope that helps uh, everybody out there. And Ruby, thank you for raising your hand, pointing out that oscillator and change line, because you knew what it was that was going to come next uh, once that bar, once that line turned from red to green. Alex, thanks for writing in. Let's go to Robert B. Robert B. writes in and says, hey, Steve, hey, Robert, how likely is it the S&P will revisit the bottom of its consolidation, the December 2018 lows? Well, kind of a similar response, uh, kind of a segue, I guess, uh, into what we just spoke about, right? The first thing is paying attention to um, – this first test inside the Dow. I think that's the one that's going to be most important to you and I. And if price moves lower from there, then let's see where price gets to in June. It is an absolute possibility. We'll show you why when we come back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What should you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, Robert, when I take a look at this, uh, these are four monthly charts out here for the four primary indices that uh, we might uh, trade here by ETFs and so forth. The Dow is in the upper left, S&P upper right, NASDAQ 100 lower left, Russell 2000 in the lower right. So what do we know here? So, Robert, you, you mentioned the consolidation for the S&P 500. The only indice that I have that's truly in a consolidation is the uh, Dow, the one that's on the left. It has really clearly defined uh, highs out there that have been tested and lows, whereas inside the S&P 500, I'd really have to stretch to draw in that consolidation pattern. I don't like having to stretch and to force a pattern out here. That doesn't mean that the S&P 500 uh, had a little slight false break to the upside out there and really... For me, the S&P would not have broken out until it would have broken above its little rising trend line, the high from January uh, in 2018 and the high in September in 2018 as well. But at this stage, what we know is that uh, it's traded above the high and the low, so you got a key reversal session out here. A good enough signal, month's not over, uh, but pretty good enough signal that uh, price wants to pull back longer term over time. But the Dow itself, clearly in a consolidation pattern. Price got up to the consolidation, backed off right from there. And so pulling back to the bottom of that is certainly a possibility. If you look at the Russell 2000, the lower right-hand side, you can see that that is stuck based on a, a swing point from uh, four months ago, 1602. So clearly that's not doing anything. It's just moving sideways, by the way. So when I say it's not doing anything out here. And the NDX 100, the nice break that it had key reversal what looks like key reversal session potentially this month as well and back below the highs from back in when was that october uh october at 7756 so that says um okay seasonal cycle maybe we get this counter trend rally up to stevie's green line and then we go from there um here's where i think you start paying attention to what the message of the S&P 500 is. And this is the monthly time frame chart with its horizontal trading ranges out here. And when we take a look at that really good, really well-defined tops and bottoms that have contained price, if you look at the 2009 bottom uh, in that 675 level out there, folks, can you believe this? I still get emails almost daily. They mostly go to junk out there with somebody telling you and I that the, uh, the S&P 500 is still headed to 6 66 out there. Okay, 
uh, 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 I don't see that happening today or tomorrow. All right, so we're a little bit safe there. But here's what I want uh, us to pay attention to, and that is at the first level of support that really needs to break, Robert, in order for price to continue to pull back. And that's going to be this 2818 level out here. You can see that price uh, in this month had pulled back and test that level. It's uh, rebounded off of that just slightly, so we're 2852. But if we do see a close, uh, yeah, it is a 6666 is definitely a magical number for some cults. I suggested that this individual maybe get a different hobby out there. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. The here is watch 2818, Robert. If we see it close below that on a monthly basis, then what I would say is price would pull back or is likely to pull back to 2604 out there. That's the next horizontal trading range. So on a monthly basis, even though we've got this like, uh, hey, it couldn't break through the highs out there, all price has really done is pull back to test support. But if it does close underneath that first level, second level then opens up. And then you got that little rising trend line off of the lows from back here in 2016 uh, to the low out here in 2018. And that may be where price would be headed on any kind of further pullback. Is there some kind of major significant pullback going on? It all depends on how somebody measures it. Are we in a bear market? For God's sakes, no. Really, folks. We've got confirmed A to B equals CD patterns that are going to take price higher. We're in an unfavorable seasonal cycle. And so maybe we've got a pullback that's going on. Are we in a bear market? Ah, I mean, I heard Gunlack on there or saw something from him uh, whenever it was calling. We're in a bear market. We're in a consolidating market, especially if we just simply take a look at the uh, Dow out there. So, Robert, that's what my eye sees. I'm just I haven't drawn these lines. This is just something that's automated, you know, as a set of tools to help you and I out. And really, we have to take the information one day at a time. I don't know if the S&P 500 is going back to 666. I just know that one day at a time, if that's your thought process right now and that's how you're trading you're not being present in the market and it's really all about being present and our role yours and mine is simply to be able to take the information that the market gives to us each day and have the willingness to change uh to use that information to then be able to interpret the market correctly out there that's really what it is that uh we all here at TFNN try to do, not try to do, we do it on a daily basis. So let's see what Timmy has to write in. Tim, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say Timmy, but I like Stevie, so it's pretty easy for me to go down that road. But Tim writes in, says, Steve, uh, you had a very fine low-risk call on shorting the SPY yesterday. Uh, do you see a similar low-risk price short in the SPY today, or has that horse already run out of the barn due to the breakdown of the uh, VIX? So, um, yesterday's call, Tim, was super easy. It, it just was super easy. Uh, didn't know what the outcome was going to be, but it was super easy. And it was super easy just simply because, hey, just using this nine count pattern, knowing that price was coming right in that resistance line at two o'clock. Um, and so we had a topping signal at resistance. I don't have a top. I, I have resistance. I just don't have the topping signal. And therefore, uh, to go short right here is a, um, I get it, I understand it, I just think it's dangerous because I don't have a topping pattern. Now, that's not to say that our man Z corrected me and said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, there is, we can get to peak G out here. And so that's a beautiful thing. And he just said, well, just go use that low swing point where that road's momentum indicator bottom formed out there. And so that looks like this here, Tim, as we take a look at the chart. And you can see that a little high that we got out here recently got to wave number seven. Now, the good news here is with regard to, let's say, directionally where the market is headed to, what our man Z knows inside the den is if we're going to use that G out there. And I'm assuming that, that, that he went short. He's going to give it just a little bit of room above the high of that candle session because if price takes that out, he also knows that that's a recycle pattern. For me, what I would be doing is just simply starting that letter count right back down here. And that was the low from this morning. And that says we're only in wave number one, letter number A out there. So I do not have at 149 any kind of um, low risk trade. Every trade is risky. And when you say low risk, it was just simply, hey, is there any kind of pattern that's forming a support or resistance to give us an idea as to where price is headed? And the answer, my friend, is no. Now, 
If we take a look at this as well, well let's do it. If you take a look at another thing that was going on this morning inside the ES Mini was price was testing the bottom of a brand new daily profile out there. That low was 28.13. We only got down to 28.15. Good enough for us, especially with other patterns that were forming out here. So we can see with regard to the ES Mini, you're asking about the SPY, price is at that resistance level of the bottom of the weekly profile, 28.58. If price closes over that, it closes over resistance here, it closes over Stevie's resistance on the 30-minute time frame chart, and price heads to 28.69. Is it that easy? It's never that easy. But that's what we would be looking at. The answer, my friend, I do not have a low-risk trade at 1.50 in the afternoon. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. SAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 136, S&P 20, uh, NASDAQ up 107, Russell up two points. Uh, Tim, you know, maybe what you should, because uh, I know you're looking for trade type information or, hey, what's the market doing next kind of thing? Well, everybody's really looking at that. I would say because the NDX 100 is the leader to the upside right now. The question is, what can we learn from the leader? And uh, so that's up about 1.5%, 108 points. If we turn in and look at the NQ out here, what we know as of 154 is prices trying to take on a resistance level. Again, where the entire breakdown began. 
where it really began. Now, granted, it uh, gap to the downside that was Sunday evening, but the real breakdown began uh, from a pattern persistent standpoint right here at 1.30 in the morning. And that high out there that we're taking, look at that was on the, uh, the 13th, by the way. And that was at 75.24.50. And we're at 75.23.50. We can see how price is running into that resistance line. I would say if you see a 30-minute close above that, because there's no other pattern that is present, right now and we may see that in the next five minutes that'll tell you that the ndx 100 is not only strong it's stronger and it is headed higher now headed higher to where on a 30 minute basis out there if we just stick with that chart we could draw in an a to b equals cd pattern that pattern would look something like this that's coming off of this uh, bottom out here on a 30 minute basis that's that roads momentum indicator bottom up to that uh whoa why is this thing grabbing everything oh my goodness Got two indicators going at once. So here's what you can see right now. You're at the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD level of that pattern. Plus you're at Stevie's resistance level. You break through that, Timmy, and price is headed to 75.69 or at 75.26. And if the NASDAQ can bust through resistance, it can lead all of the other markets higher. So I hope that answers your question even more better than we did before we went to that break. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for all the questions, folks. Always good to be here, but stay tuned, because my favorite polar bear, David White, is up next. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. And I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Have a wonderful Wednesday.